I was in Washington, D.C. this fall and had a chance to see the Capitol building being renovated. And I gotta tell you, the amount of scaffolding on that structure was incredible. It reminded me of a 1980s video game, just the pixelated Pong. It literally looked square, and you can kind of see from the picture. It had me thinking a little bit. That's what we do as school leaders. That's what we do for our kids and in our schools. We are scaffolding their future. We build relationships, we build culture, we build belief, and we build systems to support all kids. All kids. It also had me thinking a little bit about renegade, leecher, or, uh, renegade leadership and what that future might really be for our kids because we just don't know. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So when I think about education, I think about two tracks. I think of the best of what we know. Tracy talked about it, research-based best practice, relationships, relationships, relationships. Then there's this parallel track. It's a best of what's to come. And again, we don't know what that is. We know it involves innovation. We know it involves student-centered risk-taking. Renegade leaders realize a convergence of the two. We're gonna take these tracks and somehow find this beautiful reality. That sounds pretty romanticized, right? Are you excited? Here's what it really looks like, or what it, what it feels like. <laughs> it's a mess! <laughs> it's chaos! <laughs> and we go to work, and we, we have the privilege of trying to make sense of that for our kids and for our teams. And one of those tracks uh, leads right to a train wreck. It's probably social media. There's the, the, the politics. No one warned me about the politics. Where were you, MESPA? Year one. <laughs> that happens <laughs> in schools. So that's really what, what reality is for us. Here's a cartoon I just love. It's a parent. She's looking at her child, and the, the kid has a teddy bear. There's a keyboard. There are a couple different devices, tablets, probably on Facebook. And the, the parent is saying, pace yourself, honey. You're only three. You're only three. Does that sound familiar to anyone? That's really happening. That is happening in homes across the country. And there's not a leadership playbook for that yet. Now, with the Super Bowl coming up, I was just doing, uh, thinking a little bit about football and Peyton Manning. Yeah, yeah. Football players have plays and coaches have plays for everything, every situation. There's no playbook for that. Even Cowboys had a playbook. It was called the Code of the West. Incredibly pragmatic stuff. Uh, a couple of them really resonated with me. One is Cowboys never tried on another man's hat. And the principal in me gets that. It's the lice thing, right? It had to be that. <laughs> the, the other one that really resonated, I just love this. Cowboys drank their whiskey with their gun hand to show friendly intentions, okay? I get that, that's kind of cool. So the next time you're in a staff meeting that's gonna be a little tense, I encourage you to um, hold your cell phone in your gun hand, that doesn't sound right, hold your cell phone in your dominant hand. It's just gonna show friendly intentions, okay? Your staff will be put at ease, all right. So we gotta, we gotta make this connect to leadership. And the good news is there really is a playbook. And it's something I've been thinking about for a little while. It's pedagogy. Pedagogy is our playbook and it makes sense of everything. Whether we're in an observation, a staff meeting, a parent meeting, if we adhere to a clear vision as renegade leaders, MESPA, we can realize that convergence of the best of what we know as an organization and as school leaders with the best of what's to come. And in simplified terms, the pedagogy is underpinned by relationships. They are a non-negotiable. So if you have collaboration, student ownership, digital connectivity, and experiential learning, but you do not have relationships, you don't have pedagogy. So I'm gonna to touch upon a couple examples of this in action so, so we can make sense of what we're really focusing on here and be empowered as we leave. I gotta tell you a little life lesson on focus. So I was principal in Tracy for a couple years and learned a lot, had so many awesome privileges. The principal in a smaller town gets to do a lot of super awesome stuff. One of those was not writing the federal Title I grant, okay? That just kind of was a b icing on the cake, maybe. <laughs> but one of the many things I got to do was I got to be the chili judge at a local church chili cook-off. I mean, seriously, how cool is that? How many of you have ever got to be chili judge? That's like the greatest thing ever. So I went to this competition and I, there were chilies, this is pure innovation. There were white chilies, there were extra bean chilies, there were meatless chilies, I mean, you name it, I ate it. I had no method to the madness. I don't know why they let me be a judge, but I guarantee you I tried everything at least once and then some. And then that evening, I got home. <laughs> and my wife was so mad at me. I didn't even have to say a word. My, my stomach was speaking. 
a byproduct of not focusing <laughs> is chaos. Now to this day, my wife and I have an unspoken agreement. She's never said this, but I know it. I can never be a chili judge again. <laughs> I've accepted that. Now our schools, I'm gonna make a confession here. I have been guilty of chili judge leadership from time to time. Some people call it shiny object syndrome. That's cool. This subscription might be neat and benefit kids. Hey, so and so's doing that. But when we follow the code, the renegade code, the pedagogy, we have the focus, we have the precision. Here's an example. This is a video one of our amazing teachers tweeted out. His students, if you just follow this along, I'm going to talk over the video. They're using a robotic droid called Spiro, and that represents a food particle in a health lesson. I came across this, he has it on his YouTube channel, and the more I watched what he had his kids doing, I just thought, that is the pedagogy that I want to be a part of. That's what I want to support. Are the kids collaborating? Probably like never before. No worksheet can do that. A great teacher with a great pedagogy can do it and did do that. So you look at the student ownership, and those kiddos are loving it. They are owning it, and I'm pretty sure they are going to remember the digest digestive system long after that lesson, right? Do you want to be a part of that lesson? I mean, I love that. Oh, I wanted to stop before. We all know where that goes, right? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, here's another example. So drone technology. Just a couple years ago, as we were beginning to kind of experiment in our school with drones, it felt kind of like that shiny object syndrome. But now, fast forward just a year or two to today, and we know that China has this drone prototype out there that can actually transport a human being. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking like Jetsons. George Jetson, are you with me on that? We have to prepare our kids using a relevant and connected pedagogy, because if we deprive them of cutting edge relevant tools, where are they going to be? We're not going to do that to them. So here's a quick story. We have our kids working on, one of our amazing teachers has kids working on these mathematical standards-based challenges using drones. And the kids are truly owning their learning. They're following this pedagogy as they create uh, challenge courses and then actually pilot and fail and crash and pilot again and use real life measurement. And then they share out on Twitter and we trade the challenges with other schools and it just evolves. Well, I'm gonna take a risk here today because I have been taking notes this conference and um, a wise pirate said, if you haven't failed, you haven't tried hard enough. So I'm gonna fail big time. Did you get the memo front row about wearing helmets here? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot just so you have a chance to see this. And you can imagine why when you give kids these tools that they can hardly wait for school to start each day, especially when they're grounded in pedagogy. All right, I've been practicing this. Yes, that wasn't bad, okay. <laughs> Cal calibration. Okay. Tim, you will know if I did not calibrate this correctly. Okay. Wow, this is my best I've ever done. Usually it falls and explodes by now. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, Tim. <laughs> okay. But can you imagine a student collaborating with a classmate, building a challenge course, and then piloting this thing through and using real life math. Again, a worksheet has nothing on this. You know what, I did not practice landing. <laughs> yes, yes, all right. Now that's kind of cool, but let's ground this in the pedagogy. So we had a student doing one of these drone challenges. Picture your most diligent fifth grader. This kid was just a dream student. She dropped her remote control and the joystick snapped, it broke. She was devastated internally. She wasn't crying and sobbing, but she, you just know how that type of student is feeling. And in speaking with her amazing teacher, we were just brainstorming, how could we empower her in this situation? And as I was talking with Adam, we thought, we have a 3D printer. What if we allowed her to own part of the solution? She worked with her teacher to manufacture a custom printed sleeve, like she invented this from scratch, that fit over the broken snap drone piece, kind of like piping, fix the remote. Are you kidding me? She fixed it because we have tools that are relevant that do that renegade code, that pedagogy. Now I thought that was pretty cool when I heard about it, but student voice matters more than what I think. So I went to talk to her and I said, you know, I heard you kind of fixed your drone remote. Tell me about that. She looked at me 
with confidence I had never seen before because she was a, you know, she was a rule follower and she said, not kind of, I did fix it. And I gotta tell you, I teared up and I didn't really know what to do because that's not really my MO, but I got chills because I want every student to be put in a position to be able to own their learning like she did. So, what does this even mean? Precision is key. I mean, if you hear one thing, having a precise pedagogy will help us focus on what matters for kids. Anyone recognize this guy? Yep, I heard it. Jackson Pollock, a renegade artist in every sense of the word. He was known for his unbridled application of paint. There's this drip technique that made him world famous. He had a visitor in the late 1940s who came to his studio and accused Pollock of having his art be the product of chance operations, luck, a fluke. And you can imagine, if you know anything about Pollock, that didn't sit well. Pollock grabs a big old brush, dips it in paint, and vam! 50 feet away, he hits the doorknob square with a big dollop of paint. Tell me that's not precision, right? Basically showing his unwanted guest the way out. <laughs> Imagine if school leaders had that type of precision with the pedagogy we implore. Can you believe it? There's no end to what we could do together. Confronting the status quo is gonna be like a David versus Goliath battle because we know the status quo will not, go down, will not go down easy. But we also know that we have a very powerful weapon. It's precision on pedagogy. When I think of taking on the status quo, that's kind of what I think. And here's Captain Obvious speaking. We are not the big guy. We're the little guy. <laughs> okay, best spot, right? That's what it is. <laughs> we need to champion a relevant connected pedagogy. Things like collaboration, student ownership, digital connectivity, experiential learning, underpinned by Say it like you mean it. Relationships, relationships, relationships. We can do that together, MESPA. And here's what it really looks like when we connect. That is us, MESPA. And we're the little guys, and I'm okay with that because we're doing it together and we have the right child-centric pedagogy. Have a great weekend, thanks. <laughs>